Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And for today's video is going to be my one month postpartum update. I asked on Instagram for you ladies to ask me questions on anything you wanted to know on my postpartum. First off, one month since having a baby, it is crazy, you guys. Like, having a baby is honestly so life-changing but like we wanted baby for so long so it's truly such a blessing to me i'm a control freak i'm also a freak of nature i love to have a set schedule every single day i'm a person that lives off routines and having a baby especially a newborn you got to understand that routines are out the window like your life from what you're used to is out the window now you're living your life in two hour increments for the first few weeks of the baby's life like you have a two hour window to feed change your baby put the baby down and then also take care of yourself use the restroom eat shower like it's insane like when people say it takes a village to raise a baby it's they're serious like for real you need the help that's one thing i can say about coming home is if you can get help from family friends get it honestly it you need it there's no way that you're gonna be able to stay on top of your house stuff and on top of you know taking care of a baby like if you're a person that's used to having your home like to, in tip-top shape having food and dinner ready like all that it's going to be so much harder to do honestly even me putting myself together i there's days where i don't even get to put my hair up or fix myself up honestly like but there are things that i'm learning that i have to do in order for to keep myself sane to keep myself feeling good it's making sure i put myself as a priority as well and also one thing i've learned is making sure that you are well rested when the baby sleeps you need to sleep and that is 100 percent true whether it be that you're sleeping all day as soon as the baby is sleeping do that even if it's gonna throw you off balance for the first two three weeks honestly because i've noticed if i am not rested and we're having a bad night with the baby like the baby being super fussy and you can feel those feelings of feeling very overwhelmed and it's hard it's hard because it's not something that you know like when you live with someone when you move in with someone with a partner let's say you gradually are getting to know this person you're dating them you're moving in together you're getting married like you gradually evolve into a relationship but becoming a parent like it's overnight like one day to the next bam you're a parent like you will never be prepared to be a parent and now i understand what those words mean because it's something that's just thrown at you guys it's intense but it is so worth it i can't explain the type of love that you feel for your baby for your child it's like it's like that's your whole world like that's your whole heart honestly just talking about my baby makes me so emotional like i can't go ahead and get on to these questions the first question is wondering how your PCOS symptoms are like now and how are you coping with them? So as many of you know, I suffer from a hormonal imbalance called PCOS and right now with my PCOS, I stayed on top of my metformin my whole pregnancy because it was something that my doctor told me was really important, but I did eat bad. I'm not going to lie. I was having lots of sugar, lots of carbs. Like I was eating whatever I wanted, honestly. Like I gained like 35, 40 pounds in my pregnancy. That was my main priority after giving birth is coming back and taking care of myself and taking care of my hormones, taking care of my PCOS. I'm staying on top of it and I'm still trying to get back into that routine of being healthy, working out and eating better. That's my goal for the end of 2019. And somebody says, Te estás cuidando like Mexican moms do. So basically, if I'm taking care of myself for the cuarentena, which is like the 40 days. Um, at first, I wasn't. Even though my mom, of course, wanted me to. Like, she was making me the all chicken meals. Like, chicken caldo as soon as I came home from the hospital for like the first two weeks. Um, and I didn't think I needed to, honestly. I was like, well, that's just some sayings that people say. Especially the first few days, I remember I was just like at home in like some shorts and like a little tank top and i was shivering every single night like if i had the chills or i had like a un frio like just this cold all over my body and my back that i couldn't explain like 
and I was like, you know what? I need to start taking care of myself. I need to start bundling up like people say for you to do. And I started wearing um, sweats and t-shirts with my tank tops and socks to go to sleep. I noticed that I was having like esos fríos that people say. And you got to take care of yourself because your immune system is like really low. You just had a baby. The next question is, how was breastfeeding in the beginning and how is it now? Oh my God, you guys. Breastfeeding the baby latched on like within the first hour hour and a half and i thought oh my god he latched like and i thought it was that easy i don't know why i always imagined that breastfeeding was just like you putting your nipple in the baby's mouth and it's you know they're gonna know what to do and you know what to do but it's not like that like babies they don't know what to do they're just figuring it out so it is really hard you also assume like as soon as you know the baby starts sucking that milk's gonna come out i didn't know about colostrum that you know barely anything like tiny little drop barely come out of your boobs and that's enough for the baby like i assume that the baby needs like a whole two ounces the first few days of life and that's not how it works but i took it very hard because i was a c-section and then my baby went to in to the nicu so i didn't have that bonding so i felt like i struggled more to get the milk to actually start flowing to get the colostrum to start flowing because first colostrum comes like it takes about four to five days for your milk to actually come like real milk and um i i remember just crying because i felt like i wasn't making enough to feed my baby like i remember going to the NICU with like a little jar of nothing literally with a q-tip they have to grab what was in there and just swab it in the baby's mouth and like I just remember feeling like failure like how come I can't make enough milk like what is going on but I just kept telling myself like don't give up don't give up you know But then the other struggle was because my baby was in the NICU and for the first few days of his life they were giving him formula and by bottle feeding him with you know an artificial nipple so whenever he was given to me back into our room <clears throat> when I tried breastfeeding him when I actually tried latching him on he could not do it like he hated it he fought it so much because he was already used to eating with the other nipple i remember constantly calling the lactation consultant and actually it was so i remember one day just breaking down because i had this nurse and she was very helpful but you know sometimes you can say things and you don't realize it how they can hurt someone because of what that person is going through. we kind of annoyed our nurse because we kept calling her that was like the third day that we were with our baby and the first official night that we had him and it was very intense you guys like we were literally calling our nurse like every 15 minutes 10 minutes because we didn't know what to do because he would have stopped crying but i remember i was trying to latch him my husband was like babe let's just give him a formula bottle like it's easier he's already he needs to eat and that but i didn't want to give up i was like no i want him to latch on my boob like he has to do it so i was calling the nurse and she was just coming in and the baby was just screaming my husband was trying helping me on this side the nurse was over here and she said something so insensitive that I don't think she realized it, but I just broke down. She was just like, dang, your baby really just does not like your boob. He does not want to latch. Like, basically, I felt like she was just saying, just like, give it up, girl, and give him the bottle. It made me end up giving him a bottle because I felt defeated. Like, I felt like, you know what, maybe, maybe that's it. Like, my baby's not going to latch. Like, there's nothing I can do. You know, he's already used to that. And he's hungry and I, I'm not even producing any milk like I just felt like the whole world was against me at that moment and I just broke down crying you guys so bad but then luckily we had like a lady that was I don't know what she is I think she's like an assistant a medical assistant of some kind um, she takes like your your vitals and me my husband called her big mama because she was just a really really kind woman like she was so nice she was so helpful they were very encouraging and that nurse was like no you have milk you have a lot of milk i was producing a lot of milk by this time that the last day we were leaving you guys like i literally to right now i'm producing so much milk i can feed two kids like a it lot just felt good to have some type of support like that you know and they ended up helping me latch them on but we were still struggling so um, they ended up giving me something called a nipple shield 
which is kind of is for babies that have that nipple confusion you kind of it's like a little shield that you put over your nipple as soon as i put that little rubber nipple on he latched on and i started crying as well because i felt like yes finally but for like the first after that he was addicted to that little nipple like or i was like if i didn't have that i was freaking out i needed to find it i was constantly because i only had two i was washing them reusing them drying them and like i had to, i felt like i was that was my all like i needed that little nipple or else my baby would not latch to my boot one day i remember i was just here at home and i couldn't get the nipple sh i couldn't get the nipple shield because it was like drying somewhere and i had forgot and i was sitting there like about to feed him and he just latched on himself like nothing i was like oh my god and it was like from one day to the next he just forgot about the nipple shield and he didn't need it anymore and he was just eating on my boob but now my problem is that i have an overactive letdown so if you don't know what that means that means that like your breast milk comes out and, and your breast milk comes out in like full force that it kind of like chokes my baby so it, it's still there you guys it, breastfeeding is hard did you always eat healthy if not how are you adjusting and was it hard any tips I don't feel like um, I always ate healthy growing up. You know, I come from a very Mexican household, so we ate a lot of carbs and we ate uh, like real heavy meals. But something that I can say is I've, I've always been drawn to eating a very fully packed meal, like with a, how can I say it? Like a well-rounded meal. Like I'm not a person that would just eat plain, like just meat and cheese or just like meat and potatoes. Like I always liked having like salads with my meals, like with pizza, I always liked having a big abundant salad. Like anything that I can have supreme, I'm gonna have it supreme with all the toppings, all the vegetables, like I've always loved that. So I feel like that's something that makes it easier. And as, And the other thing too, I highly, I'm a person that believes that we eat with our eyes before we eat with our, with our mouth because you have to be drawn to your meal in order for you to even approach it or want to desire to eat it. So I'm all about making my food look appealing and look beautiful, which makes me want to eat it even more. So that's kind of like what I do to make sure to stay eating healthy. My tips are is buy yourself some cute you know plates that you like to eat on. the next question is are there any foods that you started eating to make more breast milk and yes i did start eating oatmeal right away um i haven't ate oatmeal this week but i do notice a difference when i do eat oatmeal every single day i produce a lot more milk than i than i normally I started would. drinking was coconut water every single day and these drinks called body, body armor drinks which are like gatorades but they're a lot more hydrating the gatorades um they i don't know they're just so much better they come with coconut water as well and they taste so good my favorite is the orange mango flavor and i noticed that when i drink those like one a day like whoa i produce a lot of milk thing compared to when i don't or when i'm dehydrated i've noticed sometimes i can't even pump two ounces from each boob when i'm dehydrated the next question is do you co-sleep with your baby or does he sleep in his own crib now my baby is a month old so he's not sleeping in his own room in his own crib yet because i'm too scared to do that but he does not sleep with us he we do not co-sleep co-sleeping is like when they sleep with you in the bed or like in a little bassinet in the bed but he sleeps in his bassinet on the beside my bed i have him in a little dog tot in the bassinet and that's where he sleeps it's just right next to my bed and somebody said i would really appreciate in detail info what you did for recovery in your c-section mine was horrible one thing was i took care of it with the little faja or like the little i don't even know how you say it yeah the little faja or the little thing that they like sent you in with i felt like that helped keeping me feeling really tight that way i didn't feel like i was just gonna fall open so making sure that you have a faja to put on as soon as you're leaving because you're gonna feel so much more support than if you're just not wearing anything and then also like i said making sure that you are taking your medication because it does help it does help to help you to heal you faster ibuprofen also fights inflammation so if there's any infl inflammation going on down there it's gonna help so stay on your medication don't overdo it and I did not lift anything heavy and to right now I'm still not lifting anything super super heavy because I know it's only been a month you know I'm still I have to wait at least six weeks that's what my doctor told me next question is how is your nighttime sleep going oh my god I think that was probably 
one of the most changing things i love to sleep like any person right like who does good without sleeping well no one and it, it was hard it was a hard transition yeah. i noticed that when i don't sleep and i don't rest i get to a very emotional place where i let my feelings get the best of me where i can break down and i don't feel like i'm doing a good job being a good mother or where it's just super overwhelming and it's just because i'm tired like i noticed like on the days that i sleep good and i you know get the rest i need and i sleep like i feel amazing i feel great like i will get up and i do my makeup i get to you know cook have coffee because i'm well rested and i can be who i need to be to take care of my baby but the days that i don't get to sleep how do you feel trying to make time available for everyone that honestly i'm still struggling with um learning to make time for people wanting to come visit or make time for people that want to be around and like meet my baby because it's just not the same anymore like your house literally can look like a mess it takes longer for you to clean your home it takes longer for you to take care of yourself and then having a lot of people constantly you know coming over and meeting you meeting the baby i'm learning that it's okay to say no that it's okay to say maybe next time or um you know not right now when i feel like we have a little gr a better grasp on what's going on and what we're doing i'm okay with inviting people over but as of right now like i limit the amount of people coming over a week um just because it can be overwhelming to me especially because i already know how i am i'm the kind of person that if my house looks like crap i'm not happy like i am very stressed out so the fact and that's when i was able to clean my house every single day now that i can't do that it makes me really stressed to think that there's people coming over and my house looks like crap and the baby's crying and i gotta do this and i gotta do that so i'm like no you know what i'm sorry but you can't come over today sorry you can come over in the weekend like i need a week in advance so i can make sure to keep my house as clean as possible do you have a recommendation on a breast pump at the hospital i used the medela one and i enjoyed that one it was pretty good but here at home i have the spectra s1 pump i think it's the pink option i got it with my insurance and i really like that one i feel like i get a lot of milk um taken out for my boobs with it uh, a lot more than the medela but i've used both and i like them both i feel like they both do the same thing really like it's just your preference whichever one you like how do you how did you handle your first c-section i think i already answered that just making sure that you're taking care of yourself that you're taking your medication that you are wearing a faja and that you're not overdoing it and that you're not lifting anything heavy you'll be fine the question is are you using a faja and the answer is yes and no no because i'm lazy and i forget but yes i tried to at least three to four times a week uh, like I said, on my good days when I wake up and I feel well and I, you know, get to take care of myself, shower, have my coffee. The first thing I do is take a morning body shower and I put that faja on because it makes me feel so much better for my back, my support on my back, my boobs. Um, just because it holds your posture so much better and also the incision of my C-section, I feel like it just sucks everything in and it makes me feel a lot better. So I highly recommend wearing a faja. I have a very, just a simple one I got on Amazon for like, I think it was like 16 bucks. I'll link the one I have down below. Like I said, it's just a very simple one, but I do notice a difference from wearing one and not wearing one. I can't believe it's been one month. How do you feel? It's crazy guys, <laughs> crazy. I don't feel like it's been a month either. I, like I said, I feel like we just came home, like, but I feel good. I feel like, every single day you're learning to be a mom you're learning to be a parent and it's worth it like i said when you see your baby and you know that they depend so much on you and you're doing the best you can that's all you can do do the best you can and just keep trying even though there's going to be days you're going to feel overwhelmed and there might be days that you're going to cry and break down but just go with it just let yourself feel that did you envision motherhood how it really is and no actually i don't know what the heck i thought motherhood was like i don't know if i thought it was like easy breezy or what but i feel like no one told me about how hard the first few weeks of a new having a newborn is the whole two hour increments i feel like no one really talks about that and I feel like no one really talks about the baby blues as like people should 
the baby blues is something that was kind of scary at first to me because I was so emotional, like crying. Anything made me cry, you guys. Anything. Like I said, the baby, the third day at the hospital when we had him for the first night by ourselves, like I broke down crying because I felt like I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But I'm learning that the baby blues is just something that we have to deal with. It's just our, so many emotions, so many hormones that are out of whack in our body. Like you just got a baby taken out of you or you just pushed out a baby. Like your hormones are going to be crazy. I feel like no one talks about that. But motherhood, uh, I'm seeing also what people say. Like it's a love that you can't compare. It's something so beautiful at the same time. Not what I pictured. I think I was picturing it so Disney, you know, La La Land. Like so easy, breezy, cute. But it's hard. Motherhood is hard. But it's just... I don't know, like I said, there's nothing that you can compare it to. How did it feel when you guys took your baby home from the hospital? Oh my God, when we got to go home, first of all, we were so ready to go home. You get no rest at the hospital. Like my husband said, it's like you have two babies because we have the baby that's constantly waking us up. And if the baby wasn't waking us up, it was the people in rotation to come check up on you, take vitals and check up on the baby and take their vitals. Like there, we were constantly being awakened every 30 minutes. Um, it was really emotional taking the baby home. We were just so ready to come home. We were so exhausted, so tired. We just wanted to be in our home. But I remember we had to call somebody down to come help us take all of our stuff down. And the man was so awesome. He was such a nice man. He was saying he was actually a singer. So he's like, hey, is it okay if I sing y'all guys a, a song to go home to? Uh, you know, um, it's just a song I, I made. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, that would be nice. You guys, this man, he had a nice voice. He really did. And his song was so sweet. I honestly don't even remember what the song was. But just hearing his voice and hearing the song... And just knowing that he made a song for like moms going home, it made me so emotional. It makes me emotional now. I just remember like crying, like tears coming down my eyes because I was just like, oh my God. Uh, I'm like, oh my God, going home with my little itty bitty tiny baby that's like six pounds, literally just so small. And I was like, I cannot believe that you were inside me for nine months and it's real. Like we are taking you home. From now at this point like it's no longer just me and my husband it's me and my husband and our child like it like hit me you know like it's us three always it, it was crazy so it, it was very emotional but a very good emotional like super sweet super sweet um, what has been the hardest the best and the hardest part about being a new mom the um, best part is of course seeing my baby change and grow every single day and having him look at me sometimes just like staring at me and all just like is the best part honestly having a child being able to have a child after so many years of suffering with infertility the hardest part is just learning to be a mom and knowing that you don't that no one really knows exactly how to be a parent honestly like everyone thinks they know how to be a parent everybody has their opinions about what works and what doesn't work but learning that no one really knows what the F they're doing. We're just all kind of like doing things as we go. And it might work for some people and for some others it don't. So try not to be so hard on yourself. That's been the hardest part. Can you share your delivery story? So I actually filmed that video already. I'm hoping that it will be already up on my channel by the time this one's up. What are you using for your C-section scar? For my C-section scar, I've just honestly been using um, stretch mark cream. I haven't really been using anything because I don't have such a big scar, but I should. I wanna start using the bio oil. My husband was like, you should just use some Neosporin. It's for that, but it's not like, that's for wounds, but. Can you make an entire video on different foods and techniques that will help with your milk supply? And the answer to that is yes. I will love to share a video on what I'm doing right now to boost my milk supply. I'm actually learning every single day. Like I said, there's been some days where I literally thought, oh my God, my boobs are drying up because I'm making like no milk. But it was crazy. It's like your body knows when it needs to make more milk to feed the baby. And also I noticed that when you're bleeding heavy from your postpartum my milk supply is kind of low on those days as well but i am going to be sharing a video on the foods i like to eat and what i notice helps me and some drinks so i'll be sharing that soon and the last one is what do you drink to keep your milk coming and that's what i shared already i already mentioned that is the coconut water the body armor and lots of water all those things help 
to produce more milk in your body. The more hydrated that you are, the more milk you're going to create for your baby. So guys, those are all the questions that you asked me on my postpartum. And in my postpartum, it has been pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, there has been some days where they've been pretty hard. Like I said, I have broken down. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be all happy and dandy like, no. Sometimes I don't have the help that I need and I take it really hard because like I said, I'm tired, but I noticed I'm learning that it's the days that I'm tired is gonna be the hardest, but those are the days I have to push through because at the end of the day, I know that, at the end of the day, I know that I am my baby's safe haven. I am who my baby looks up to and he needs me as much as I need him. So just trying to remember that I have to say, you know, not to be so hard on myself that this is something I'm learning and if I can't get to everything that I have to do that day, then so be it. Making sure that the most important thing that you're doing is keeping another human alive, like, hello, that is your priority. Like, you know, you are taking care of a little baby, a human that loves you. So that's what I'm learning to do. Not to be so hard on myself on those days where I need a little extra love for me to make sure I give it to myself too. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're a new mom, hi, welcome. Take it easy, I know it's hard. And if you've already been a mom, if you have any you know, tips or any words of advice that you'd love to give me, please let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you guys next time, bye.